It's time for the Lakeville Government Channel Kids in Government program. Kids and Government! Yeah! <laughs> Today's show, join Euphronia and Euphronia as they travel throughout the city trying to discover the mystery of what things are on What's That? Walking the dog with Louie the dog finds Louie at City Hall trying to find out about building permits. Hank's World takes us to Air Lake Airport where Hank the Hog discovers vintage aircraft from World War II. And this month's Kids Quick Tips features Georgia the Frog and Ann Messerschmidt doing their own version of Frog Calls. And I'm your announcer, Roger Mildustein, coming to you from Antlers Park. And now, here's the host of Kids in Government, R.R. the Raccoon! Greetings, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Lakeville Kids in Government. I'm R.R. the Raccoon, your congenial host, here in our program where we take a humorous and educational look at how government works. Hey, it's the dog days of summer, everyone, and we're out here at Antlers Beach, and I encourage everyone who is here in Lakeville watching the show to make sure you get out and visit one of our area beaches. They are so cool and so neat, but hey, we're not here to talk about beaches. We're here to introduce our first segment here in Kids in Government, which is a new segment called What's that with the Fall Sisters? And, um, well, they're tough to explain, so let's see what it's all about. Here's What's That with the Fall Sisters. Hi, everyone. I'm Euphronia, here for this edition of What's That? And here to help me is my sister, Euphronia. Come on in here, Euphronia. Hi! So the purpose of this segment is I show you a picture and you try to guess, what's that? Right, sister? Yeah! All right, now here's the picture. Guess, what's that? So, Euphronia, what do you think that is? I don't know. Is it a barbecue grill? Is it a bathtub? Is it a faucet? All right, so you guys give up what it is? It is North Park Water Tower. Isn't that right, Euphronia? Yeah! <laughs> ah, well, we've changed locations. You didn't do very good on that one, did you, Euphronia? No! All right, well, let's take a look at our next thing on What's That? All right, Euphronia, what do you think that is? Um. I don't know. A hot tub? A shopping cart? Flannel pajamas? <laughs> well, do you guys think you know what it is? Well, it's the Dakota Heights Park sign. You didn't get that one, did you? No! Well, that one was even tougher than the last one, wasn't it? Yeah! Well, we'll try to make it a little easier for you. I'll tell you that we're in downtown Lakeville, so let's find out what's that. Yeah! All right, Euphronia. What's that? Um, a brat bun? A new tire? A pool toy? All right, did you guess what that was? No! All right, then let's reveal it. It's... Ah, look at that. It's a street light in downtown Lakeville. It's at the base. So, folks, that's it for this edition of What's That? We'll see you next time. Say goodbye, Euphronia. Yeah! Hello, everyone. It is I, George the Frog, here for this month's Kids Quick Tip. And joining me is Ann Messerschmidt. How are you today, Ann? I'm good. And you are really into the environment stuff, working for the city, aren't you, Ann? Yep, environmental resources specialist. Perfect. Well, today, Ann and I are going to do our frog calls. Ann will start first, and then I will respond with my frog call. So hit it, Ann, and what's the type of frog you are going to be calling? Well, I'm going to do a western chorus frog. Oh, very good. <laughs> All right, here we go. I'm listening. 
Oh, and that was very, very good. And now I will respond to her call. <clears throat> Way down upon the Swanee Ribbit. <laughs> Pretty good, huh? Yeah. Yeah, we got to do two more of these things, so. <laughs> we'll see you later in the show, folks. <laughs> hey, everyone. R. R. the Raccoon back here to introduce our next segment on kids and government. And it is my good friend, Louie the Dog, with a segment on walking the dog with Louie the Dog on how to get a building permit. It sounds boring, but it's very, very exciting. So take it away, Lou. Hey everyone, it is I, Louie the Dog, here for another edition of Walkin' the Dog. The dog. <laughs> and today I'm at Lakeville City Hall to find out how you get a building permit. I can't decide if I want to remodel my basement, put a deck on the back of my house. I just can't decide. So I'm gonna head inside and find out what I gotta do to do it. Here we go. Pardon me, I need to find out how to get a building appointment. Could you direct me to the appropriate department, please? You bet. Building inspections is down that way, ma'am. Thank you very much. Oh, and it's dog, not madam. Building inspections. This side above the window. Um, excuse me, is there somebody back there that can help me in regards to a building permit? Hi, I'd be happy to assist you. Oh, hi, I'm Louie the dog. What's your name? Good morning, Louie. I'm Karen, and well, I'm with Building Inspections. Well, nice to meet you, Karen. Karen, I just can't decide. I've got so many home improvement projects I'd like to do. I'd like to re-roof my roof, fix up my basement, and uh, I might even want to put on a deck. Could you tell me what to do? Well, first you have to decide what you really want to do first. Um, 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 I would like to finish my basement. Okay. Do I need a permit for that? You would need a permit. We do, a, we do one permit for a finish of a basement, and that would include your framing, your plumbing, your ductwork, and your electrical. My ductwork? <laughs> no. Not that, that kind of ductwork? Not that kind of ductwork. That would be where the air comes through and gets into your basement, like your air conditioning and your heating. I get it. Well, you know what? How do you know if something needs a payment? Well, we have a, a list here on a sticker that we give people oh. that you can put into your kitchen cabinet and it would tell you when you need a permit. And also on our city website, there's a list of what requires a permit. All right, Karen, please give me the paperweight so I can fix up my basement. Be happy to do that for you, Louie. Wow, such a happy and courteous city employee. Okay, Louie, yeah. this is your permit application. Yeah. You would just fill out the contract or the uh, resident portion of the, of the application. And this is a handout on a, on a lower level or a basement. And in this, we give you some sample plans and what kind of information we need oh. from you to complete your application and to complete your permit. And that's it? That's it. Great. Well, I will bring this back all filled out as soon as I learn how to read and write. Well, maybe your mom will help you. You know what? I don't have a mama. Oh. I'm I got sorry. a mother. I got a mother. Yeah. She'll help me, though. Wow! Those folks in the building inspections department were so helpful. Hey, I got my paperwork. Now all I have to do is go home, fill it out, bring it back, and I'm ready to complete my basement. <laughs> so, folks, if you have questions about getting an appointment here in the city of Lakeville, come down or call City Hall at 952-985-4400 or check us out online at www.lakevillemn.gov. <laughs> This is Louie, and I'm taking myself for a walk. See ya, folks. <laughs> oh, I got a good building payment. <laughs> I mean, I'm going to apply for a building payment. Okay, I got it right. Yeah, okay. I'm quiet. Yeah. Shh, quiet back there. Okay. I'm giving him a bad time. See how long I can stretch this out. Goodbye. everyone, R. R. the Raccoon back here to introduce our next fun-filled and exciting segment here on Kids in Government. And that segment is Hank's World with my good friend, the one, the only, the great big pig, Hank the Hog. Take it away, Hank.
Yes, this is Hank the Hog. Oh, yes, Commissioner. Sounds good. I'll get right on it. <laughs> <laughs> That's Hank's world. Hello, everyone. It is I, Hank the Hog, here for another edition of Hank's World. And today, we're out at the Air Lake Airport waiting for a World War II bomber to show up. Uh, camera operator, it's a B-25, right? Yeah, he's giving me the thumbs up. Oh, this pig is so smart and intelligent. So let's hang out here at the airport and see when the bomber lands. Oh, it's going to be so cool. Let's watch. Now, where's that thing? I guess it's not like waiting for a commercial airline. Well, it'll be here soon. Do, do, do. Well, I'm here waiting for that bummer. I got my camera all set up. We're gonna get some cool shots. Yeah, I'm gonna zoom in. <laughs> yeah, I'm a pig behind the lens. <laughs> well, I we're waiting for the B-25 to arrive. I'm joined by one of the members of the Commemorative Air Force, Jim Gilmore. How are you doing today, Jim? Uh, we're good. Weather looks good. We're going to have a fun weekend. We're very excited to see the cool planes. Now, why don't you tell me a little bit about your group? It is called the Commemorative Air Force? Yeah, we're uh, about a 200 volunteer member driven organization. We're one of 80 wings throughout the United States. We have six aircraft that we fly at special events, air shows, and things of that nature. Uh, we're bringing in a B-25 uh, Mitchell bomber. It's a twin-engine bomber. That's what they called a medium bomber back in the day. Now, what is the purpose of uh, showing these aircraft, Jim? Well, our primary purpose is to educate the public, like I said, about uh, World War II. It just gives some younger people nowadays a little bit of history about you know what went on back in the 40s and in the war and all that good stuff. Very cool. Now, we're very excited to see the airplane, but i got to ask you another question. What do you do in your civilian life, Jim? Uh, I own a catering business called, yes. called Divine Swine Catering. Imagine that. Oh, poor grandmama! We, we might be having you for lunch today. Uh, so thanks, I'm Jim. I'm getting out of here. <laughs> okay. Well, now that the planes have landed, I'm joined by another member of the Commemorative Air Force, Bob Goble. How are you doing today, Bob? Fine, thank you. Good. Now, uh, 
These are really cool planes, but I'm a pig, so I don't have any idea uh, what kind of planes they are other than their trainers. Could you tell me a little bit about this yellow one behind you? I'd be glad to. Uh, the yellow one behind you is called the PT-22. Uh, it's got a five-cylinder engine, uh, two-place cockpit, as you can see. The really cool thing is that it's an open cockpit. Yeah, wait, they, they, they've got no ceiling. Yep, you what do, they do? what do they do if they swallow bugs up there? It's tasty, extra protein. <laughs> I like it, good answer. And how fast can that plane go? That cruise is about 100 miles an hour, uh, or 100 nautical miles an hour, which is slightly faster than 100 uh, statute miles. But it's a fun plane to fly in. I haven't had the pleasure yet, but uh, I'm looking forward to that. And uh, what year, uh, kind of just got a general, how old is that plane? Uh, I don't honestly know the original date of the plane. I believe it's late 30s, though, if I remember correctly. Very cool, very cool looking aircraft. Now, if we pan over this way, we got uh, another trainer. Uh, what kind of trainer is this, Bob? Okay, this one's built by the Volte I'll Corporation. I'll get out the camera here. And it's called the BT-13. The BT stands for Basic Trainer. Uh, they would start on the primary trainer, which is the PT, and then they'd go to the basic trainer, which is this one. Uh, after they get uh, uh, reasonably proficient in this, then they would go on to what's called an advanced trainer. But at any rate, they would fly this, then they'd go to the AT, and then that from there they would either go to heavy equipment like the bomber that you just saw come in. Cool. Well, speaking of the big bomber, I'm going to go over and take a look at that thing. All right. I think you ought to. It's really cool. Just don't get underneath the engines. They drip oil. Yeah, I know. <laughs> End up bacon, probably. Here I come, Miss Mitchell. And now, here's the big airplane of the event today. It's a B-25 medium-range bomber, nicknamed Miss Mitchell. And there's so many cool things. Let me tell you about this bomber. This is a medium-range bomber that was used during World War II, and the cost to build this thing was $135,000. Incredible. The maximum speed is 275 miles per hour, and the flying range is 1,200 miles. This bomber could hold a load of 4,000 to 6,000 pounds worth of bombs, and the operating cost today to operate this magnificent plane is $2,400 an hour at cruising speed. We're now inside the bomb bay of the B-25, and oh goodness, I hope those are fake bombs, but those are what the bombs would have looked like when they would have dropped them during World War II. Ooh. And to conclude our tour here of the B-25, we are here in front of one of the two engines that this B-25 has. Now, believe it or not, each of these two engines has 14 cylinders, which creates 1,700 horsepower. Oh, wow, it's very cool. Well, we want to thank everybody from the Commemorative Air Force and the people here at Air Lake for giving us such a free reign to check out the airplanes here. So, until next time, this is Hank the Hog for Hank's World. See you, folks. Ooh, maybe they'll let me fly this thing. Hey everyone, and enjoy it, the frog back here for another Kids Quick Tip. Anne, that was a good first frog call you did. Thank you. Would you like to do your next one, please? Sure, I'm gonna do a bullfrog. This is one we don't wanna hear in the city. Why not? because they take over all the other native frogs. Oh, they're mean bullfrogs? Yes. They're bully bullfrogs. They're, they're huge and they oh. bully them out. All right. All right, so here it is. <laughs> Do that one one more time. <laughs> That's very good. Now you ready for my frog call? Yeah. Here we go. <clears throat> Moon ribbit. <laughs> pretty good, huh? That was beautiful. Thank you, I liked yours too. Um, um, we'll be back with one more, folks. Um, um. You like it when puppets mess up their lines? You like it when puppets don't know what they're talking about? Well, hey, hey, hey! Then this is the segment for you, because it's time for Kids in Government Bloopers. I'm now joined by another member of the com Take two. And now, here's the big bird of today's event. It is the one, the only. Well, it isn't the one and the only. We are now inside the bomb bay of the B-25. Actually, not the bomb bay. This is Dr. Bombay. Come right away. 
Now this engine has 14 cylinders, believe it or not, and that could... Um, I'm looking for... A you distracted me. The squeaky shoes. Well, Karen, I'm interested, and I can't decide if I want to re-roof my roof, redo my, uh, my basement, or if I want to fish... fish? Fish my deck? Take two. Well, I suggest you don't fish your deck. I know, that would be very bad. We'll have to do it again. Put on a new deck, or if I'm going to uh, update my uh, basement. Could you uh, help me with that? Well... That was really terrible. <laughs> that was really ter terrible. That <clears throat> Um, excuse me, could somebody back there help me with um, some information? Uh. <laughs> oh, bless you. That hurt my ears. <laughs>Folks, that's it for this edition of Kids in Government. But before we go, we have to have this month's historic point. And doing this month's historic point is Louie the dog up in northern Minnesota by the Superior National Forest. How you doing, Lou? Hey, RR. Great. Louie, please give us this month's historic point. Oh, ho, 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 that was a great historic point. Well, folks, that's it for this edition of Lakeville Kids and Government. If you have questions on any of the information we've covered, please feel free to give us a call. Our studio line is 952-985-4418, and you can watch this show and all the programs here on Channel 16 at our website at www.lakevillemn.gov. That's it, folks, and we'll see you next time on another edition of Lakeville Kids and Government. Oh, I'm jumping in the water! segment time on LKG. Enjoy! Hi there everybody, it is I, Mary Utter, here for another edition of, you ready camera operator? How they do that excellent job? Well we're here out here at Quigley Sound Park where we're gonna find out how the Parks Department waters new sod and new trees in the park so the first thing you have to do to water stuff is to fill up the truck with water. So let's watch, here we go. <laughs> oh, he's gonna turn on the water now, watch out. Ooh, look at that, oh. Oh. A half, three quarters. Oh, look at that, that, look at that needle go, guys. It's getting to be full really quick. Wow. Well, now we've filled up the water tank filled with water, so now let's go over to the Veterans Memorial and water some of the new sodden trees, and maybe we'll even water some of the flowers. Here we go, Woohoo! thing that we want to talk about is that, oh, I'm getting wet. Ah! <laughs> well, we're now going to roll up the hose and see what the big fountain at the front of the truck does. So let's watch the hose go in. Whoa. <laughs> oh, oh. almost got my schnoot stuck in there. All right, here we go. Well, here we are. We're actually riding in the water truck, and we're going to spray a little water here. 
Hopefully our cameraman won't get wet. Oh! Look at that. That's all right, shoot him right in the face. You won't mind. Wow, look at that, how he's watering the sod and the grass. Very efficient, I like that. Well, now he's gonna change the stream of the water. Look at that. Oh, look at that, pinpoint accuracy. Whoa, look at that. Well, folks, that's it for another edition of How'd They Do That? I'm Mary Uda. I'm going to go out and water some more sod and some trees, and well, you guys can follow, but whew, this is a very cool operation. So we'll see you next time, folks, on How'd They Do That? See you later. Let's go. Here we go. Bye-bye. Don't get run over. Woo-hoo! Watch out! Cows in the water truck! Woo-hoo! Yeah! And now it's time for Hank and Ed. Today's story, how to save water. I like to keep the water running whilst I brush my teeth. No! Always turn your water off when you brush your teeth. Oh. I enjoy keeping the hose running when I'm washing and drying my car. No! You should use the hose only for rinsing. Best of all, I like to run the tap till the water runs cold. No! Just keep a pitcher of water in the refrigerator, you pig. Don't be a water hog. Use water wisely. <laughs> <laughs>